Hey everybody, this is Tyler Baker, the pastor of Valiant Baptist Church in Jacksonville, Florida. And this is going to be the second video in a multi-part series on the subject of creation and evolution, wherein I am demonstrating just how stupid the theory of evolution actually is. And in the first video, we dealt with the Big Bang and how cause and effect, the universal law of cause and effect, actually debunks the Big Bang and solidifies and proves the existence of God. So go back and watch that first video if you haven't already. And uh, in this video, I want to get more so into the science and actually show you from a scientific perspective how the Big Bang is impossible and that it is, is stupid and preposterous. Now, uh, people that hold to the Big Bang, of course, they do so because they don't want to and they don't believe in God. And the Big Bang is the attempt to explain, you know, the universe itself and the existence of the universe. It teaches that there was a time where there was nothing, and then within that state of nothingness, something happened and caused an explosion and brought about all time, space, and matter that we see today in our observable universe, which is obviously uh, insanity if you believe that. Now, I want to show you one of the most basic laws of science, and this is a law of physics. Specifically, it's one of the laws of thermodynamics. <clears throat> and this is the first law of thermodynamics. This is something that you're going to learn very early on uh, in science. Usually in middle school, you'll get into this. And what the, the first law of thermodynamics uh, states is that matter cannot be created nor destroyed. So again, it's that matter cannot be created nor destroyed. Uh, and then, you know, the, the last clause would be that it can only be converted, and that's to energy or, or so forth. So uh, matter cannot be created nor destroyed. Now, supposedly an atheist, someone that believes in evolution, they believe that they can give you all just constantly, they can only give you naturalistic, uh, excuse me, naturalistic explanations for everything that takes place in the universe, and that they don't need God to explain anything, anything and that they never appeal to the supernatural, and they'll even accuse or I'm sorry, attack and mock Christians and uh, any sort of theist that will appeal to and invoke the supernatural to explain the universe. But I am going to, I submit to you today and right now that, that everyone at one point must appeal to the supernatural because the only explanation to the universe is that God created it. There is no other explanation, just as I showed in the first video. And I'm going to demonstrate that to you right now. And in fact, the atheist also appeals to the supernatural. Now, what does it mean to appeal to the supernatural? Well, it means that you must go outside of, go beyond, or what's super mean? It means above, right? So it means to go above or beyond or outside of the laws of nature, right? That's what that would mean, that you would defy or violate the laws of nature. Now, an atheist, <coughs> they criticize and attack and go after Christians for doing so. But they do so themselves in so many different ways, in so many different areas of their belief. And I'll give you an example right now. The Big Bang defies numerous laws of nature. Now, in this particular video, let's look at the first law of thermodynamics. The first law of thermodynamics teaches that matter cannot be created nor destroyed. Well, let me ask you a question. What is the Big Bang Theory? The Big Bang Theory is the attempt, naturalistically, to explain all of the universe that we see today. To explain reality, to explain time, the existence of time, space, and matter. What is the first law of thermodynamics again? Matter cannot be created nor destroyed. Now, a person that believes in the Big Bang, what they believe took place was that at that moment, naturalistically, without a God, no mind, no one involved, matter, time, space, and matter was created. So I want you to notice that the atheists can all day long try to ridicule and mock and make fun of Christians saying, oh, you just believe, you believe in a sky daddy that just created everything in the universe. Right? You believe in you know, the spaghetti monster living up in the sky that created everything in the universe. But notice that they do the exact same thing. They go beyond. They appeal to the supernatural. They violate and defy and go outside of 
basic fundamental laws of nature. Now, this is just one of many examples that I'm going to give, but this is a very obvious example on where they themselves also appeal to the supernatural. But here's the difference. We appeal to the supernatural, and we believe that an almighty, all-powerful creator did so. That God set the, he created the universe. He's eternal. He's beyond. He's outside of. He transcends this universe. He's infinite. That he was the, the cause to the effect to bring about the result of what we see today. That he governs and he set into place all of the laws of the universe. To have laws, you must have a lawgiver. That he's the lawgiver. He's the one that brought it about. Of course, if he implemented the laws, he could do so. Now, that's rational. And that makes sense that God created the universe. But do you know what they believe? They believe that nothing, now think about that for a minute, that nothing, you know what their supernatural is? It's nothing. They believe that nothing created the universe. They believe that nothing caused, you know, that nothing is the supernatural. Do you know why? Because everyone must ultimately appeal to the supernatural. In order to explain the universe, because it's so apparent that there is a God, you must at one point appeal to the supernatural. Now, I'm going to go over many other examples of this, where atheists do so. Here's just a very basic one. And you can make your choice on what you think the supernatural is. Because there's, it's obvious that there's a God, and God wants you to find him and know who he is. So you, when you appeal to the supernatural, whether you be an atheist or whether you be a Christian... You're going you're gonna to choose something on what you think that is. I say that God did it, that God created, created it. That the, the reason why there's deep complexity, not only that, that the world exists, but that there's deep, amazing, unfathomable complexity in the universe is because an all-powerful, all-knowing, eternal creator did so. Do you know what the atheist says? Nothing did it. Nothing, nobody. They believe in a mindless, in a mindless, you can't even call it a process because it's in a state of nothingness. That for no reason, it's totally absurd, illogical, it's literally insanity. That nothing did it. Nothing violated the first law of thermodynamics. <clears throat> it's absolutely preposterous. So the next time that one of these atheists... <coughs> try to attack you and mock you for appealing to God, remind them that they do the same thing. They just believe that nothing did it. That there was no mind pulling the strings. That the laws of, 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 of nature were defied and violated, but it just happened for no reason. It's not possible to, to, to hold to all, just a, a wholly naturalistic explanation for everything in the universe. Do you know why? Because God did it. And that's your only option. For the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen. God bless you and have a good day.